I did it. I broke my promise to myself not to buy more yarn. And I'm sitting here from randomly decided to check my email, which I don't know why, because I was supposed to be texting one of my good friends to see what color yarn she wanted because I'm in the mix of doing my cherry sweater. Hang on, I'm gonna reposition my phone so that way I can show what it looks like. My voice has been horrific since um, my allergy attack. So I think this is going to be the front, the side here. And I'm going to have to clean up this little middle section here. That's when I attempted to do my version of the jogless. I got the directions and it didn't come out quite as well. And now that I have a better understanding on how to do it. So the colors, the sweater in itself looks really great. I love it. And I just want to make sure it fits her. So that's why I went to go check. And I got an email from Sander, Sander Yarn Company. And I've heard of this company several times on different knitting podcasts. And the finished product that some of the podcasters have shown, it really looks like a really beautiful yarn. So I purchased one skein of their Siri Alpaca. I've wanted to try this. I like mohair. I've I, So far, I don't have an issue with mohair. But um, if there are instances with some of the more inexpensive mohair where it gets a little itchy, especially around my neck, I have a significant amount of mohair in my knitting or yarn stash that I really want to do something with, um, but I don't know quite what to do with it. And I'm curious if this Surrey alpaca will be a nice alternative because it's in about the same price range as my as a mohair that I purchased. It's a little bit better quality. Although the knitting for olive mohair, I'm really, really like that. I use that a few a uh, few bits and really like the feel of it. Um, so we'll see. Um, I've already shown the variety of different yarns I have, and so I'm not gonna do that, but I am going to take the Syria alpaca and pair it with my Stephen West yarn that I got. Um, and I know it's not Stephen West yarn. I just got it from Stephen and Penelope. So I'm calling it my Stephen West yarn, but I'm gonna pair that Syria alpaca with that particular yarn to do what with it? I don't know. Um, I might use that particular yarn to do this pattern I just recently found. It's, um, it's on Ravelry. It's a stripe pattern. As I mentioned before, I'm in a stripe mode, which is the reason why I'm doing this. And usually whenever I'm in like, a, ooh, I need to do um, a type of project, like I was really desiring to do cables um, or a texture sweater, I think is a better way of putting it. And the Salty's Day sweater fulfilled that need. I had such a ball of doing the braided cable and to doing the eyelets and then doing the um she did this lace portion that was with stacked um ridges it was it was dope it was really if you're looking for a texture sweater to give yourself the opportunity to practice a variety of different knitting techniques that sweater is hands down the best one to do it, um it's like taking the ingrid sweater but it's a little bit more wearable. So the reason my hesitation about doing an Ingrid sweater, which is why I haven't cast it on yet, is the sleeves. Um, I love the front of it, but I do not like the sleeves. It has this um ridge going around and the pattern luckily was gifted to me. So it's it's not like it's wasted because the person I shouldn't say gifted to me. The person um who gave it to me, she already did it and she um offered to share her pattern with me as well. And I've done enough petite knit patterns. Um, where I know how to make modifications where I could take that. But anywho, uh, I'm, I'm in a stripy zone and I thought that this particular sweater would fulfill the desire to do stripes. Yeah, I'm in a bed knitting, but, um, I want to do more stripes. I'm really, I'm enjoying the different colors and it's going by really quickly because I'm like, Ooh, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. So I'm curious that this is what um, knitting those striped socks will do. So I just purchased the cereal alpaca and I'm really curious about sock knitting. I'm, I find it to be a method of knitting that you really have to practice 
um, Jeremy Shirt Rose practice um, making modifications so that way you can adapt the pattern to the specific, um, specific size of your foot. And it also, excuse me, also allows for an opportunity to try different knitting techniques. There's patterns I've seen where there's this stitch. I don't even know how to how to pronounce it, but it's a cool looking stitch. Um, it's a Hermani socks. I really want to cast those on because I love the the way that the, it looks on the pattern in the different images. And again, another knitting podcast I've watched. I believe this one's um, it's a Pine Cottage. She's doing one uh, a pair for her daughter, and she keeps showing the one sock that she finished. And it really like every time I see, it, I'm like, yup, still want to knit it, still want to knit it. I want to try it out and see what it's like. Um, and then in addition to uh, doing the Hamani sock, I want to do a toe up vanilla sock and I want to do um, the, oh gosh, what is it called? Oh, the Spark sock by Andrew Amari. That's going to be my last sock. So next month is my um, um, sock of knitting. I'm not necessarily actively participating in Knitting Natty's um Shark, uh, shark week, uh, sock week, um, because I'm going to be doing sock month. But these are the first pair of knitted socks I made. And I use uh, Lion Brands Mandela uh, yarn. Uh, it's it's like a um, it's like a marled color yarn. And it's a, a weight for it's acrylic, 100% acrylic, super soft, um, pretty sturdy. I don't wear these too often, but what I really liked about this powder, and this is the first time I ever knitted a pair of socks here. I'll come into the window so you can see. So this is the first time I've knitted a pair of socks. What I liked about it is that A, it allowed me to try on a new way of casting on toe up. And it was funky. Oh gosh, what was it? I'm so sorry. I don't remember the name of it, but basically I cast on two needles on um, the number of stitches I needed on two needles. And the way I did the cast on, it ended up binding the needle, the um, yarn together. So this is the reason why, I don't know if you can see here, it's this little braid going down the middle. And then you continue to go on. And what I love so much about doing this particular pair of socks, that it gave me a chance to see how far up I need to go before increasing and so then you do some increase this is a free pattern so i'm not giving it away anything um this was done by freeform uh, knit freeform um you have to look for it a little bit it's not really easy to find but the pattern is for free but yeah you work it up and i was able to try it on so i was able to get the right length in terms of my sock um, because i have a very interesting shaped foot uh where it's long and narrow <laughs> and yeah, it's but wide in one particular place. I'm not gonna show you my toes, but it's pretty it's pretty interesting. And then um you do your heel and then you do your leg and then you do your ribbing. And I really enjoyed knitting this. I, I worked on this project as I flew to DC uh last year and had a really great time knitting it. So I'm looking forward to continuing on with that journey. Uh I yesterday went through a whole moment of like, I don't know what I want to knit. Um, I need to do something. So I decided just to focus my attention on my cherry sweater and successfully break for sleeves and play yarn chicken with the yarn color I chose to do my next stripe in to make sure that I can have at least 10 rows of that stripe color. Um, I'm not sticking quite to pattern. Um, for that particular item, there's a, a specific amount of rows that you're supposed to do for the stripes, but I'm doing something a little different because of my uh, inadequate packing. I went to um, Georgia to visit a family member and my expectation was to pack as uh, a large quantity of this lovely Sanders Garn yarn. Um, this is in the color of pearl gray and I had it all squared away. And for some reason, I left the yarn on my desk instead of putting it inside my travel yarn bag. So I only ended up with one skein of the Sanders garn that I was already currently using. And I had all the skeins for the stripes. So I had two options. I could just pause what I was doing and work on nothing. Uh, I did bring a sample of the... Um, a yarn that I want to make for my best friend. I plan to make her the champagne cardigan. And while I was there visiting her, 
I wanted to work up a swatch so that way she can feel what the yarn feels like with the held together with the baby alpaca versus held single because she liked the one held together with the baby alpaca I was just going to make her the good grandpa sweater because I got gauge for that particular item because that's a bulky weight and the Siri alpaca held with a double uh DK with the Sanders garn um what is it double Sunday or Sunday double I don't know I uh, works well so anywho did that swatch or whatnot I'm like but I just can't sit here and not knit. And the way my schedule was when I was visiting my family, I had no time to actually go to a yarn store, nor was I going to go to a yarn store just to buy more of this yarn when I have such, um, it feels like a large quantity of it. And I sincerely don't know what I'm going to do with all of it. The sunlight is coming in. It's not necessarily sunny. It's in that bright color stage because it's still super cloudy. It's in the 50s. Today we went from 90 degrees on Friday to the 50s, but it's all good. So anyway, um, I decided to do the modification and do large blocks of the stripe color instead of the thin blocks that the pattern originally calls for. And to be honest with you, I really like it. It's coming out really well. It fits um, nicely. It's an oversized fit on me, and I think it's going to fit really nicely on my friend. Um, I'm, but just in case it doesn't fit though, because this is working up so quickly and I have another quantity, I am asking if she could share with me her favorite color, because just in case that one does not fit, I can then take the additional skeins of yarn that I have and potentially pair it with her favorite color. And I just realized after knowing each other for 20 years, I don't think we ever told each other our favorite colors. That's what you really do when you're an adult. That's not... When the conversations, I remember that elementary school, like, what's your favorite color? But you don't really do that as an adult. So uh, I'm working on that um, right now. And that's the whole reason why I turned off my audio book for a moment, sent her a text message. And why I went into my phone, I don't know. But I broke my promise to myself. So I went from June 1st to June 4th without buying yarn. It's three whole days. Uh, but I honestly can say I don't foresee myself buying any more. I sincerely do want to try the uh, Siri alpaca because it might be a good alternative to the mohair because I, like I said, some of the mohair that I have is itchy and I'm a big fan of donating um, my yarns that I know I'm not going to use. And so, and I know I could resell it or whatnot, but I don't see the point in that. I've already made the purchase. I've given business back to someone else and um, I'm using money that I budgeted specifically for yarn. And um, one thing I am trying to remind myself on is that even though I may not know exactly what I want to do with the yarn um, when I initially purchase it, I can be patient with myself and allow myself time to find the right pattern for it because knitting and crochet is not a marathon. To knit something, to crochet something, oh, it's not a race, it's, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And I say this is that there are instances where I've done a project and it's taken me weeks, if not months to do. I'm currently working on sweater 19. I've been working on this sweater uh, since uh, March. I believe I started in March. I have to double check my rivalry page. But I started that in March and I consistently worked on it throughout March to get from the initial yoke. And then once I broke for the sleeves, I pretty much lost interest in it uh, because to be honest with you, it's it got a little boring. Uh, it's a four row. It's a pat. It's a four row repeat. So it's a super easy pattern. And if I really focus, I could get it done in one week. Um, because it it really in a four row repeat works up really quickly. Um, once you're not increasing, because you had to really pay attention to do the increases properly, because you had to stay in pattern. And she, the woman um, for my favorite um, knitwear, I know that there are some people who are critical about her patterns because they're not size inclusive. But the attention to the detail that she's giving to do the appropriate um, increases, I understand why she may not have as many of her patterns in an increase because not every design um, is going to fit every body type. Like she has some designs that just won't fit my body type. I'm not, um, and just like there are certain designs that won't fit someone who's real thin. Everyone has a unique shade body. So you have to pick a pattern that's really going to be, that's going to accentuate the beauty that, of your body. And that's just the way I look at it. And so for me, that particular sweater is going to highlight the narrowness of my upper body while flattering the 
curviness of my lower body. I just need to actually take the time out to focus and pay attention to the pattern, not even pay attention, just finish the pattern. And the great thing, as I said before, I am, um, if I can dedicate a good seven, I would, yeah, I would say 72 hours, which I would not do in like three whole days. I would just break it into chunks. I could finish that because um, with the body, I'm about four inches away from it re reaching the desired length. I'm at the length of what it calls for in a pattern, but I would like to add four more inches to it. So I'm almost there there. And that would be, uh, I've done one. So that would be, uh, now I'm at 10 rows of eyelets and then I'll be done with that. In terms of the arms, it's a drop shoulder. So it's actually already to my bicep. And so now it's just working on narrowing my sleeve. But the way the pattern calls for you to do a specific amount of um, eyelets and then you do a rapid decrease. And so again, it's just doing it. And I just need to do it. And I think flying on an airplane is probably, I probably, when I travel again, um, I'm probably going to bring that that particular pattern with me because it's the, it's a mindless knit. Um, it I won't use, uh, excuse me, lose the yarn and I can quickly get through everything I need to get through. So I think that's where I'm at with that. So as I said, I bought this yarn, um, the Sanders Garn, um, no, excuse me, the Seri Alpaca yarn. I'm going to see if I can show it on my computer screen. Like I said, I wanted to buy, a, I had made a list of yarns I wanted to buy myself for my 42nd birthday because I knew I wasn't getting um, like a birthday, a big birthday gift from my husband. I told him that wasn't necessary. And we had, as I said before, successfully did some um budgeting and so um things just allowed me to have a little bit of a surplus of cash and i had was i was successful in buying the yarns i wanted um like for example as i had bought this um so i ended up with more money in my budget so this is what was crazy i had successfully i had put aside the money and bought yarn from Biscotti Yarns, but they didn't have the sweater quantity. So they refunded me the one that I wanted. So the $70, $70 I spent on the sweater quantity was refunded back to me. And so I was like, okay, um, I'll just put that one aside. Then I found another yarn on Biscotti Yarns again. And this is not on any means, like I'm saying anything critical of the store. Uh, what happened is, is that the app that I'm using to access their store is not reflective of the sweater quantity that they have in on their actual website. I've been using shop um, because it has all my payment information um, saved. Uh, whereas the, what was I saying? Whereas the uh, Biscotti Yarn website is a little different than what they have available on the app. So long story short, I was able to um, download, um, I was able to get uh, some of the money I had spent at their yarn store refunded back to me because it was the wrong quantity, which was actually great because I'm like, yay, I can actually buy the yarn I want for myself. Um, more yarn I want for myself. Not to say I didn't want those yarns. I definitely wanted it. So I re that yarn was returned back to me. And so I'm like, oh, you know what? Um, Mrs. Babs was on my list. Let me go ahead and buy and see if I will see anything. So Mrs. Babs is a, a yarn hand. They have hand dyed yarn and they have a other, couple other types of yarn. And I've been looking um, for about almost two years now because I've been knitting since July 2021. So I guess two years looking at the yarn and haven't quite seen anything that I was ready to make a big leap on. Um, and then they had this beautiful electric blue yarn. It was almost about the color of this um, pouch. And I didn't purchase it because I just couldn't swallow the fact that I was about to spend $56 on a skinny yarn, even though that particular skein of yarn had about 600 yards. It basically buying that one skein was buying um, like three-fourths of a sweater quantity or a whole sweater quantity of the ranunculus. So I could have definitely, and when you think about it, when you buy multiple skeins of yarn and you end up spending 56, I'm like, 
when I did the math, I'm like, it makes sense to buy it. But I just, my brain was like, no, you can't do that on one skein. You do that on multiple skeins. I couldn't, couldn't wrap my head around it. So I, I didn't do it. Naturally, I had been unable to find that yarn since then. My computer does this weird sound, so I don't know what's going on. So I couldn't find that yarn. Naturally, I've been looking and looking for it. And then I was like, um, I got an email reminder. It's like, oh, your refund has been processed um, from Biscotti Yarn. I'm like, oh, wait a second. That means there's more money available for the yarn budget. And it wasn't out of May yet. So here, I went on um, Mrs. Babs Yarn and I spent a good 20 minutes, couldn't find it. And then I finally found it. It's this Mikkel's Killington um, Yarn. And I really like this one. I thought it was a cute color. I'm going to bring it, make it closer so you can see. Um, this one has 160 yards. This one, I believe, is 350 yards. And I ended up spending $38 plus shipping costs, which um, ended up being $43. So I was like, yes, I still came on a budget. Um, and I'm trying um, Mrs. Babs yarn. I wanted to try this yarn for a minute. And the great thing is, is that I can make a pair of socks with it. Or I can even do a hat. Most likely I'll make a hat with it. Or maybe I'll even do it as part of a stripe um, sweater because since I'm into the stripes. Which brings me to um, the pattern I was talking about. So I recently purchased the Scoop by um, Hoagie Locatelli. So let me bring it up so you can see. Here we go. This is the pattern. These are some of the pictures from it. I want to make sure. There we go. So for me, when I saw this pattern, what initially I gravitated towards was a beautiful color change. The fact that you start here doing a large chunk of white and you go into a small stripe and then it continues on. And obviously you have to increase it properly. Like I'm learning that with the current stripe pattern I'm doing right now. You just can't randomly do that. You have to increase properly. So I really like that. But for me, what made me say I really want this pattern was this bottom section here. So it goes from light to dark and I am just in love with that. And I really, really love the way this particular pattern came out. So I decided to purchase that particular pattern because I have um, one, two, three, I have at least three, probably four, um, different versions of cream color yarn that I can use for this particular pattern. With this pattern, it calls for sport weight. And I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five different sports weights. So four are in the color that of the original pattern. And then um, one is in a gray color. So I have the colors that, of this and I would definitely wear gray. I love gray. And I actually see myself using my gray yarn um, for this, I think it would work up perfectly and it will be machine washable because I see myself wearing this over and over again. So I'm really excited about it. And with Hoagie Locatelli's patterns, it is a really unique, she has a unique way of constructing her patterns, even with the V-neck boxy. The only reason why I have not started and finish that particular pattern has nothing to do with the pattern it was a yarn I selected you really have to work with a yarn that you're excited to work with especially if you're doing a pattern that calls for a lot of stockinette or that calls for a really complex maneuver in doing um, either lace work or cable if you don't like the yarn it is not going to be an enjoyable experience and for some people it's about the product and so they could care less about their experience in knitting or crocheting um, with the yarn or the tools that they're uni using. And for me, it's about the process. I love the process of knitting. Don't get me wrong, I love the product too. And it's, um, the product is validating. Um, it is validating with the time that you spent, the money you spent, so you feel validated in that particular process. So for me, I, I guess I'm a little bit of a both. I'm, I'm a dual person. And I really, truly love the... Um, the idea of doing that particular pattern. I just don't like the yarn that has set aside for it. And I have not, um, I don't have anything in my stash right now that makes me want to do that particular pattern with um, the yarn I currently have. So that pattern is just gonna wait on hold um, for it. Maybe one day, I'm not really into boxy sweaters as much right now um, because of the way my arms are shaped. And the person I was going to knit that for, um, 
she's in the process right now of trying to have her first baby. And so they do get pregnant. I think that that um, when they get pregnant, not if, when they get pregnant, I'm going to do that particular um, pattern for her because I think it would be an excellent maternity shirt. And if she's anything like me when she was pregnant, she's probably going to have hot flashes. So I'll probably use a lightweight cotton base yarn um, where, or a wool as well because I know wool can definitely mimic your uh, body temperature. But I got to make sure I find one that is it going to be irritating to her skin because she has um, skin sensitivity and it feels like when you're pregnant, everything gets heightened um, in that particular regard, at least in my experience. So I do have a, I have some bamboo yarn now that I think about it, that might be good for, I have fingering weight bamboo um, that might be a really good fit for that particular pattern. So we're, we'll see um, as well. I'm not going to rush it. I'm just going to wait and see um, what happens with her. But in the meantime, um, this is the same friend. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make her cardigan, uh, which brings me to, I feel like I'm like jumping all over the place. So stick with me, please. So I mentioned before, or maybe or not, because one video I did, I didn't like the outcome of it. So I'm going to delete it. So if this is a repeat, I apologize in advance. So as I mentioned before, I missed Pat while I was in Georgia and uh, after I did my yarn swatch, I was working on my uh, large block uh, striped sweater and I was working um, with this particular yarn and my friend, she touched it and she was like, oh my God, this is super soft. I love it. I'm like, I know. It's like, do you like love it, love it? Or do you like, oh, this is nice, love it? Because you know, non-crafters, um, they're like, oh my God, that's so pretty. But like, would you wear it pretty? So she was like, yes, I would totally wear it. So I went back to pick up every stitch and I purchased um, the last five skeins that they had and I wrote a note to see um, if they have any more. So my goal is, is that when they ship out that yarn to me, I'm going to go ahead and cast on um, the cardigan with that particular yarn, with this yarn. So this is uh, La Lamana Perla. Uh, this is 60% cotton, 25% alpaca, 15% silk. And I know that the champagne cardigan uh, is typically made with um, mohair held together with a DK weight um, superwash merino or regular merino. And given her, my friend's sensitivity to yarn, um, I'm hesitant about using that. And that particular pattern is still listed as DK and this is DK as well. In looking at the tag on this, it looks like it will have a similar gauge with the knitting needles. And I, like I said before, with Petite Knits, he has 23. Um, you get 23 by 30. So 23 um, stitches and 30 rows when using 3.5 or 4.5 millimeter, millimeters of, of it. So I'm leaning more towards this one for her um, cardigan. Or maybe I might even do something else with it. But with all that said, I really hope that I can... Let me just bring out the champagne cardigan. Oh, I don't want the kit. I just want mine. So with the champagne cardigan, what I'm a little frustrated with myself about is that I've had this pattern. This was one of the first patterns I bought. So when I started my whole knitting journey, I... I started in July 2021 and by the end of the summer early when did I purchase this because it tells me on here uh I guess I don't have the date uh when I purchased the yarn by then I had made two or three knitted garments and you know when you're successful in making your first knit or crochet garment you get a little cocky and that's what happened with this particular um, desire because according to Ravelry, um, the DK plus lace equals to be a worsted weight yarn, but according to the pattern, it still says DK. So, um, this yarn is DK and this calls for the same needle size and the gauge is 18 stitches. So I may have to go down, um, I, I probably will have to go down a needle size. I'm going to try doing this in four point yeah i'm doing it in 4.0 millimeters and see if i get gauged that way um but we'll see uh and if not i don't have anything to hold together with this and i just really i if it, this doesn't work 
for that particular pattern, I'm just going to do the, I don't know what I'm going to do, to be honest with you. I've been going back and forth about her um, pattern. I had looked at the camera rose. Um, I used this for my, uh, one of my cardigans, the anchor cardigan. I used that um, held together with the wool lace because those two hair held together made a DK weight and I got gauge and it came out really nice. So I was thinking about using the comma rose held together with the DK and making the um, grandpa. I just can't pick a yarn that I like. Um, and it's pretty clear she likes re these really super soft yarns, which is great. And it won't irritate her. She rubbed against her neck. She didn't feel any discomfort um, with it. But whereas the Sunday, double Sunday, um, you can just tell she didn't like it. And I'm like, it's great. It's okay. I'm going to figure it out. And I've been on a mission to figure it out. And then luckily for me, I have the world's most patient friends. When it comes to me, um, you have to be patient if you're going to be friends with me. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully I will figure it out. Um, I know what colors that she likes. She likes black. She likes navy blue. And yeah, I'm going to figure it out. The one thing I have not tried out yet is the wool folk. Um, I mentioned before that I was going to knit something with this wool folk yarn and here's one of the skeins. I know it's going to be hard to see because it's in black. Here's one of the skeins. This is a chain net. Um, this is wool folk. This is, I think this is far. Yep. And you get, uh, for four to five millimeters, you get about 16 to 17 um, and I was just going to buy a sweater quantity of this, but they ran out at the yarn store I was at. And then I went online to see if I could find anywhere else. Can't find any of this yarn. And I should have bought the three that I found, but this is, and I haven't found, a an adequate yarn substitute that has the same quanti quality of yarn with this, but this would work for both the champagne cardigan or for the, um, what is that? The um, good grandpa, because uh, this is uh, because of the gauge on this, I could work that even if I hold it together with something. So I believe I have two skeins of those. Yep, I have two skeins of those. And the second option that I was considering is the Tove, again by Wolf Oak. Here it is. And with this one, again, um, I would get about 4.5 to 5.5 millimeters, and I get 173 yards with this. And it can be hand wash cool. And this one, uh, it's not as soft as the other one, but this one would be better for a cardigan, I believe. I feel that um, this would just have a little bit more durability. But I could be wrong. I feel like this is also, oh, this is just super lightweight. It's a beautiful yarn. I absolutely love both of them. So, um, but one's 173 and the other one's only 140. 43 in that um and i have two skeins of the first one of far and one skein of tove so yeah i i thought the um double sunday double sunday yarn would meet the expectation but it's not so i'm back to basics again uh, which is a little disappointing uh the only other option i can consider I was looking at my Voldivine yarn because I don't have a particular pattern with that. But the issue with that is that, again, the yarn that I plan to hold together with this is a kit kill, a kill mohair. And she already identified that mohair is itchy and makes her uncomfortable. So I wouldn't know what I would do with this because I purposely brought, bought this yarn to go with this together. I mean, I, it's oh, so pretty. It's like perfect. And then with this one, this yarn in itself would be perfect for either the champagne cardigan or whatnot. So I don't know. I really, really don't know. I had planned to make the champagne cardigan with that one um, as well. And I had... I have options. I have other things I could potentially use that mohair with. There's always something I can even hold it with a double Sunday um, yarn because it would it would have a I could hold it together to hold um, for to make a Sunday sweater. I still want to make that, so I can definitely use that yarn for other items as well. 
But coming back to my original item about talking about the Surrey alpaca. So let's see if I can bring this up so I can show what it looks like. So I'm, I have my dilemma with the Hoagie Locatelli um, yarn. I think I have an idea of what I'm going to do with my movement sweater. So as I said, into stripes right now. And the movement sweater is one that I am really feeling right now. I saw it popped up on my Ravelry feed and I was like, oh, what is this? I never heard of this pattern. And here it is. This one, I just, I really, really liked it. So this particular pattern, um, this this particular sample here was made in 100% BFL um, Aran weight yarn. Uh, and But you can also do a striped version, version with either using worsted or Aran weight yarn. And what I like about this is that uh, there were a couple of others who have also made this pattern using DK weight yarn and it came out just as nice. So I can even use my um, Voldivine yarn that I have with this. Uh, she does suggest uh, this pattern in the movement sweater is made by Lily Kate Frant. And she does suggest that you don't use like a cotton based yarn because um, it's going to stretch out. And she wanted to uh, put together a pattern that's going to be size inclusive, which she did. Um, it goes up to like size 9 to 60 to 62 inch for a bust, which is amazing. Excuse me. And uh, the construction, it's worked seamlessly from top to bottom. You begin with casting on your neck um, and making a folded net band. And then you do the rest from there. And it's a well-written pattern. I've only skimmed through it. I haven't read it in, enti in its entirety. But she has the abbreviations and the techniques really well-written. It's like clear as day. I've never seen German short world directions written out with such clarity before. And where you're not immediately going to say, I have no idea what you mean. And then she's very clear about where you can find the stripe version. Uh, so, I mean, just looking at the pattern first glance, if you are new to knitting, I would say dive into this because it is well written. It's sectioned off really well. She has clear directions on where you can find the additional information as well as her um, how to get support. The pictures that she has are relevant as well. So here, look at some of the pictures. So this is what the stripe one looks like. I'm going to blow this up a little bit so you can see it closer. So this is the stripe one and this is the solid one over here. Uh, and for me, what attracted me to this pattern, why I decided to purchase this as a um, pattern birthday present to myself is our it's just the design detail right there. I'm really am excited about that. So with all that said, um, because I have such a massive amount of uh, acrylic yarn, which she has identified, you can definitely use acrylic yarn. I have acrylic yarn in my bottom drawer over there. I have acrylic yarn everywhere. I've decided that uh, I'm going to use... Um, I might use one of my acrylic yarns for this particular pattern because I think this will be great for my winter workout um, where I I love working out. I know you can't tell, but um, I don't work out because I dislike my body. I work out because I just genuinely like the endorphins I get from it. Any perk I get from being a little smaller, it's just an added bonus. So I have plenty of acrylic yarn, like really nice quality acrylic yarn too. My color theory yarn, I think it would be excellent if I were to do the solid color or even a stripe because I have a sneaky feeling I'm not going to be able to use this yarn in the capacity that I initially purchased it for. Um, and I might contact pick, pick up every stitch and cancel that particular order because as I'm talking with you right now, I think, I think... I am going to either do the champagne cardigan in my, I have this really beautiful acrylic yarn from Paintbox. Um, that's made by Paintbox from Lovecraft that I think would be perfect for the champagne cardigan. And I know she wanted to have black, but she also is, she likes gray a lot too. And gray is such a neutral color. And that particular yarn is machine washable. So if somebody spills something on it, and it's breathable. That's what I like about the paint box yarn, which is why I haven't used it yet. I like their yarn a lot, their acrylic yarn really well, because uh, there are some, like the Karen Simply Soft, although it has a beautiful shine to it, 
and it works out really well. Why I don't like the like it as much is because you get really hot with it. I've used that twice for um, a garment. I've used it for a crochet. I forgot what I used the other one for. Can't remember. But anywho, um, my red sweater that I used it for crochet, I love that red sweater, but boy, it makes me so hot. And I know I'm at an age now where my body temperature goes up with a little bit more ease. So I can see why some people can still use it and I don't have to worry about that. But if you're someone whose body temperature constantly fluctuate, I wouldn't go with the Karen Simply Soft for a garment. Stick to using it for um, blankets or even a scarf that you can remove easily. Whereas the uh, paint box, my first experience of using that for, again, I used it for crochet and this will be my first time using for knitted. It did not, it, it was breathable. Like I didn't feel hot in it. It's the same thing as my um, my jean yarn by Lion Brand. Again, I feel very, breathe. it feels very breathable. I made this crochet um, summer top that isn't um, lace at all. It's just um, the extended single crochet. You do two, um, I did like two squares of it and then I seen the squares together. And then I crocheted a little bit of an arm cap and then that was it. Um, that was, I took a modification on a pattern that I didn't understand. And when I say modification, I just looked to see how many stitches I need to cast on. And then the stitches that they had, I uh, later found that that was wrong. So I'm like, you know what, let me do a measurement. Uh, if this is my back measurement, I'm going to cast, and I know how many stitches I need to cast on for the back measurement, for my back measurement. So I did that and then I was able to do it. So that was a self-created um, crochet um, summer top that I made, my, made for myself that I wear all the time in the dead of summer. It's the perfect thing to wear when it's super, when it's very warm here, because it, it's hard to say Massachusetts is hot in the summer because of the breeze. We have a beautiful breeze that's constantly present, uh, even on the days when it's humid. You can still feel this breeze. You can go to certain pockets and you'll feel comfortable. And that is the one consistent summer garment that I wear that I always feel comfortable in. Um, as well. So I, not that I think, I know, I think the champagne cardigan or even a good grandpa um, sweater would be good for that. So I'm going to look at that because I, I think I finally found that match. Okay. So this is why I love doing these videos because it's such a great thought partner. So let me recap. Number one, I'm going to stop buying yarn. So today's June 4th. So from June 5th until July Fourth, I'm not gonna buy any yarn. Now we are traveling as a family for July fourth uh, for July fourth weekend. There's a strong possibility that might be a yarn store in the vicinity, and I feel it's only fair that I buy yarn if I'm traveling. So there's that. Second, um, my cousin is having a baby shower, and I misplaced her baby shower item, and I want to ask her, but I can't remember if it's a surprise or not. But anywho, it's a baby shower in July that I need to go to in New York, upstate New York. That's not too far from pick up every stitch. I feel it only makes sense that I go to the baby shower, love all my family, and then drive to pick up every stitch before going home. That's my rationale, and that's what's gonna happen. That so July will definitely still be a month. I will probably purchase a few things. So I'm gonna have to start budgeting for that. Cause um I'm also going to DC uh in July as well for work. And I, one of my students, bless her heart, and I mean this with love, I went out of her way to get me a White House tour scheduled. So I'm going to be touring the White House. So I don't know why I'm excited. I'm just, I'm a nerd that way. I can't help it. But I'm excited about my, I think it's a private tour of the White House. Um, it won't be with the group. So I'm doing that. I got all my permit tickets and all that. I passed clearance. So I'm doing that um, on so I'm doing that at the end of this month and it, how long I'm down there, it carries like right before um, July. So I was thinking of driving um, back from D.C. to Massachusetts. Uh, what I would do is stay, go to a White House tour, drive to Maryland to go to Magpie Fiber's flagship store and see some of my family along the way. Excuse me, I got a lot of spittle. See some of my family along the way before coming home. That's what I think I might do. Um, so yeah, I just got to talk my husband into doing that trip with me. I think I can do it. 
fingers crossed. Um, long story short, I think I have a, a handle on going at least three weeks without buying yarn. And I could do it. I've done it before. I've gone three days. The Surrey Alpaca that I just purchased, I think is going to go really well with this yarn. What I'm going to make with it, I don't know. This is this has a this has 400 man, um, meters of yarn, and there's several patterns that I have that has like this cream base, and I really love this yarn. So I think I am going to buy another skein for it because um, I really see this with. Um, here, let me bring up my Ravelry Q so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, and I don't sound like a crazy person, but. Um, my Barbie Bad Day sweater, I am making that with my alpaca yarn with a, I'm going to do a pink sweater with the, the bad word in the middle. Can't wait for that. I just got uh, the yarn for the Great Love sweater. So I'm going to go ahead and work up a swatch of that. So I'm going to um, see how that comes out. And if I like the swatch, I'm going to go ahead and make that pattern. The Traveler, I have both quantities of yarn for that. The Throwback, I have the yarn for that. Um, here it is. Uh, the No Fear Shorty Socks, I got plenty of yarn for that. I bought a lot of um, fingering weight yarn. I just need to purchase the pattern. And I'm going to do the pattern with the YouTube videos um, as well. The Toe Up Afterthought um, Heel. I've never done the Afterthought Heel, I don't think. So I'm going to do this. I don't know the difference between all the heels yet because I'm still familiar learning that. The Fajola, I already have the yarn for this. I plan to use the wool thread and a... Uh, the Drops uh, Silk Haze. Really like that yarn. Now the Copenhagen, uh, me and the sweater have are not on the same page. So with this Copenhagen pattern, I initially purchased the Blue Sky Faber yarn, fingering weight with this. I had planned to make it, but then my husband was like, I really like this yarn and I want this. So I was going to make his, his, um, the sweater I'm making him with that. But then I purchased this yarn here, as I mentioned before, and I was going to make, make his sweater with that. But then I realized he's not really a camel green type person. That, that's not his color. And based on the color of his skin and the time of year he's going to be wearing this, it just won't be a good fit. I don't even think green would be a good fit for him. Um, I don't think that makes a good color on him. I think navy blue would make a better color on him. And unfortunately, I have not found a navy blue that I want to make for that other than this one so this is that the as you can see the pattern calls for for this the um the Copenhagen pattern calls for this uh is a guard um, alpaca too I got this from um Stephen and Penelope's absolutely love this yarn and want more of it and it's actually not that expensive so I'm either a going to make my husband's um the zipper sweater that I talked about already with this yarn which is where I'm leaning towards and make my Copenhagen with the original yarn I purchased, or I'll make the Copenhagen with this yarn because I have lots of this color yarn. Uh, well, I shouldn't say I have lots. I have three skeins of this and I do have um, a navy blue um, uh, mohair that I can use for this. Or this can work as well. So we'll see. Oops. Okay, that's not gonna open. Got yarn for this, got yarn for this. The Ingrid sweater I was talking about before. Um, so yeah, the slippers, the zipper sweaters I'm going to make. So I'm going to start those in August. So the boys, my two younger sons are going to have the zipper sweater in red. And my husband and a soon to be 19 year old stepson will have this color. And my stepson, he doesn't know what color he likes. He's been all over the place. So it sounds like um, based on his, response I'm going to pick the color for him um because he said blue then he said green then he said black then he said I don't care then he said something else so who knows I think I'm just going to go with the gray because he likes to wear gray pretty often and which means my husband's going to like the gray as well and so I probably end up making his in gray too or black my husband wears a lot of black and um I think black would be a better fit for his. So the zipper light man sweater and the light junior are the two that I'm going to be making with that. I already did a swatch with the Sandus Garn Pierre Gint. Did not like it. I thought it was too scratchy and I know my family and I don't think that they would actually enjoy 
wearing that particular yarn, so I'm not going to do that. Mulby sweater, already got that yarn. Charlie got that yarn. Sweater number 20, got plenty of that yarn. This is the Hermani's Everyday Socks I mentioned before. As I said before, this is a fee pattern, so uh, I would highly recommend checking that out. The Zulf, I have this yarn. I have not cast this on, but I'm in love with this pattern. It, what got me was the collar as well as this um, section here. So I'm looking forward to doing that. I, um, I read the directions. It looks really great. Sweater 15, this was a pattern gifted to me. So, and I have the drop sky and I think it would be a perfect lightweight feather, not lightweight sweater to wear um, when the heat is cranked up really high in my classroom and I need a lightweight sweater. Ah, uh, the weekend, weekender. Oh my goodness, me and this pattern have been through some things. Eventually, I'm going to pick a yarn. So right now, I'm scheduled to use my acrylic um, yarn, Heartland. And I don't want to because I know it's going to be super duper um, warm. And I just can't do warm um, garments like that. I have to use garments that allow some breathable air and I just don't have an Emmy to buy another, or to go through the process of searching for another yarn for this. So I it's stashed away for Heartland. We'll see, we'll see. Dreama, I have. So with this one, I have the yarn for it. I have planned to use my Lion Brand uh, Pound of Love yarn because I love the way it worked up and it really is, that particular acrylic is really responsive to like, wool wash um soap and wool wash softener so which is why i was leaning towards that however it calls for the lopi and so since this pattern calls for lopi and the great love cardigan calls for lopi i'm going to do a swatch large enough for both patterns and if i end up liking it after i wet block it and do all that jazz then i'm going to go ahead and buy a sweater quantity of that the hara uh, v-neck sweater I am, um, I have a large, I shouldn't say large, I have a sweater quantity of the bis this Biscotti Lewis, uh, Louise Roberts uh, yarn. It's beautiful. I attempted to use it for my Salty Day test knit and we did not get along because I was using it with paired with Mohair, the Knitting for Olive. I loved the way it looked, but it was 100% my fault. When I cast on that sweater the first time, I did not cast on with the right needle size which led to me having a moment. But I'm just gonna go ahead and use the yarn for this sweater because I think it would be an excellent fit and I, I love the drape and the softness of it. So I'm excited about that. The Go Wing, I actually have the yarn for this. They initially purchased the Lion Brand Respun yarn and this was, again, one of those early purchases that I made after I found success with something. And then once again, I was buying this pattern with some cockiness, like, oh, I just did that cow. I can do this. I have never did a color work sweater before, um, but I thought that using a more inexpensive yarn for color work, it would give me a chance to practice the technique, learn what I like and dislike about it. And I read through the pattern and it's actually really well written. I think I can um, successfully implement the expectations using this. The acrylic light sweater, I'm all over the place with this yarn. So I have, as you know, two sweater quantities of the Double Sande um, yarn. Uh, so I can either do this in white or I can use my, use, excuse me, um, this yarn for that because this is a fee pattern. So whatever I have left over, I will use for that. And um, the designer um, strongly suggests using a lighter color yarn because otherwise you really will not see the beautiful textures of the of the cables and whatnot. And it's an all over cable sweater and I am dying to make it. But the reason why it's at number 25 and not at number one is because we're having a fight about what yarn I'm using. And when I say we, I'm having this fight with myself. Uh, the Silver Forest, I actually got a yarn kit from Willie Thistle. I love their emails and I was like, oh my God, it's so cute. And I wanted a bag, so bought it and yeah, looking forward to making that one day in the future. Um, the way that the pattern is written, I think it would make more sense for me to do the Silver Forest first and then do the uh, Gold Wing. So um, we'll see about that. 
uh oh the wishbone sweater so i heard that this is now a youtube tutorial that is paired with the video to go through some of the more complex sections of the pattern which i'm excited about uh again this uh and i actually have the knitting for olive double sunday like i have i've been wanting to make um a yarn a pattern with the yarn so initially with that particular God, i hope you can actually see my computer screen and it's not just okay good <laughs> i initially i planned to make that particular sweater with this yarn and i think i might go back to this um because i saw someone else had did it with a dark color yarn and it looked gorgeous and what i love about this mohair um i think it's going to lighten it up enough so i i think i'm going to go back to originally using the yarn i had put aside for that uh, another Jennifer Snellingas. Um, this will probably be another year from now because this is unspun Icelandic yarn. Um, and hopefully someone will do a knit along so I can do it with it. My Sparks. This is a mosaic knitting. Um, I initially cast this on and had an epic film. So, and it's 100% because I'm not used to mosaic knitting. And it was just a day where I was not 100% focused and I was not making, um, I made mistakes with it so i would like to go back and do this again and by 2024 i will have this completed same thing with a gift too by 2024 uh this sweater i initially purchased with the intention of making it for my husband but i actually love the way men's sweaters look on me because of the way my upper body is shaped um i think it like makes me look cute <laughs> so i actually might make this for myself i i have um again some tweed karen simplest off which again i probably shouldn't use but i also have a sweater quantity of the city tweed i know it's dk weight and a pattern cost for worsted but i figure if i hold it together with mohair that that would give me my worsted weight and the gauge on this is what um about 5.5 .5, um stitches per inch using um a us 5 to 7 uh, millimeters so which is around the same thing that the pattern calls for so i might actually do that oh that looks so pretty okay and finally what i wanted to talk about so those were the first 30 items in my queue so i have plenty of items in my queue i have plenty of options to choose from um more than likely we'll be buying more of a sweater quantity of this i bought um what did i buy i bought something to go with this walk yarn more than likely i'm going to either knit up a pair of socks with this or use it as a part of a color work um as well or use this whole bag as a color work but something's going to be made with that um Stephen Fenelope yarn i'm in love with the bag it's it's definitely one of my faves um ooh, oops my big old butt knocked it over so it's just a matter of just picking picking and choosing um so wanted just to start on sign off by saying thanks for listening to my knitting rambles as i started off with talking about i made another yarn purchase but i'm excited about pairing that siri alpaca with that unicorn yarn that um again i really do go see myself going back on the steven and Penelope um site and purchasing um at least one more skein of the cream color one because i think that will work better with this one pattern that i want to make but i have no plans on making that pattern anytime soon and but you know what frightens you that oh my gosh what if it's not available the great thing is is that i if for some magical reason i know the light that that pattern runs out i did buy some yarn from expression fibers they were having a, a really good sale that would have cost me like 80 bucks for the yarn and i got it like for half that because i had a coupon so i purchased some yarn from expression fibers and i intended to make a triangle uh it's called a sunset diamond sweater it's still for free so i don't know how long it's going to be on sale but it's beautiful it's actually pretty well written but I got confused and I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. And she, in her tutorial, she walks you through the first 14 rows. And after row 14, you have to do the rest on your own. And I don't know why I have done every single one of the patterns I downloaded for free, as well as cost me money on uh, Expression Fibers. I can't figure it out. 
and I've done petite knit, I've done vernaculars, I've done them for other, but I just struggle with doing patterns from her site. And when I read it, it makes sense, but the execute the outcome is not reflective. So instead of doing that triangle shawl, I'm going to pause on that and do the uh, uh, T Tony Lipsy has a shawl pattern. Let me see if I have it in my rivalry queue. It might be in my queue, it might not be in my queue, but she had a, uh, I don't think I put it in my queue yet. No, I didn't. Uh, she has a pattern, uh, it's a triangle shawl, it's for free. It's part of her Crochet Academy. It's a, It's. I think it's called the Milan shawl. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it, but you can go on her blog, you can go on YouTube and you see that she walks you through the entire, she has a full tutorial on doing that particular um pattern uh it's you use four millimeter and she's just the suggested yarn is true boo which is uh, available in most big box stores i'm going to use um my dk yarn i purchased i uh, know this is my finger weight one but i'm gonna use my fingering weight yarn that i purchased from needles at the ready um because i did a swatch of it using it and i love the drape um I, I love this. Oh, it's just so pretty. This is with 3.75. So I'm going to go up to four because I, I want it to be a little bit more lacy. I don't want it to be a tight fit um, yarn because the way that she initially calls for it, it's more of a tighter and I want mine to be loose. And I think doing that with the fingering with the larger needle um, or hook size, it would give me that. So I'm going to start that um, particular triangle shot and make that for my mom for her birthday because her birthday is at the end of this month my hope um and the way that it works out, it works out pretty well because i did this in 10 minutes um as well i got through five rows in 10 minutes and some of those minutes was with me being distracted by the beautiful little six-year-old that i currently have so i'm going to um continue on that tomorrow i'm going to finish uh the shawl using the yarn that my student gave me i'm going to finish that uh, during my break and show it to him so he can see i did use the yarn he got me as a gift so i want to finish that one and then as soon as i finish that one i'll start off with the other one and i'm going to keep the shawl that I, I started for myself as well and you know what because there are always times when we don't know what we want to do with a pattern we've all been in that situation where it's like oh i should do this oh i should do that where we second guess ourselves about a pattern when that happens i tell myself is to go with your gut and I'm gonna stick to what I originally had planned so that's what when you make revision plans and after you do research my husband loves that green yarn I'm gonna make his his uh zipper sweater Ooh, that took a minute with that the great thing is is that I can hold it together. I have a variety of different of uh, mohairs that I can hold it together with to kind of soften it if it's too scratchy for him or if it's not the right texture as well. Um, I haven't even done a gauge swatch with that particular yarn, so I need to do that. I'll get on that. And uh, as I was saying, I don't always know what I'm going to do with my yarns. And I think that many of us are in that situation that we have all these yarns that we see on Instagram, on YouTube, in our emails, uh, in a yarn store, big box stores. We see all these beautiful yarns and we can envision so many different things with it, but there's not enough time to do all the things we want to do with it, which is the reason why I'm a big fan of just taking a break and just doing a reset. So for example, that's what I've been going through for the past couple of weeks. I've been going through the, what about this? What about that? What about this? I've been arguing tooth and nail with myself and I'm going to stop. I'm over here in my little corner because I need to put away my project bags that I just now have stewing around where my room. So I'm going to take a break from freaking out and staring at my yarn and looking for my yarn to give me an answer and instead continue working on my current whips instead of thinking so far ahead and just enjoy what I'm currently doing. So the only thing I would like to cast on is my cardigan. And now that I've gone through this lovely thought process with all of you, um, all two of you, or maybe there's more, 
was watching this um because i haven't quite broadcast that i've started doing these videos i'm going to go ahead and pick which yarn i'm going to use my paintbox yarn to make my friend her cardigan and she really wanted that good grandpa sweater so i'm gonna make her that good grandpa sweater because i ha have um I have the yarn for it and I think she's going to love it. And the yarn that I am going to use is breathable and it's going to give her a beautiful drape. And the great thing is, as I'm bringing my camera along, you're coming with me. There it is. So much yarn. Yeah. So this is, I've alluded to this. You see, this is more yarn that I have. <sighs> One day. Oh my God, there's more back there too. Sweet molasses. What is that? Oh, this is more tweed yarn. So this is a yarn, leftover yarn I use for my D DRK everyday sweater. Looks like I have one, two, three, four, five skeins of this left. So I got to give that to somebody um, as well. And I also have all this... Um, Patton, um, Patton's uh, Classic Wool DK Superwash Yarn. This was uh, given to me because the person who gave it to me, she doesn't knit anymore, so she gave that to me. But this is the yarn I was talking about that I'm going to most likely use um, for Lou's Good Good Grandpa sweater. Because like I said, it's breathable, it works up really well, and um, yeah, I think she'll like it. She'll be able to machine wash it too so we finally found the right yarn and i know it's not the exact color she initially called for i think she might like it so i'm going to text her i know she's going to still say yes go for it i'm going to text her just to confirm is it okay if i do the pattern i shouldn't take all of it out because what she says no but i'm going to ask her if i can do the pattern in gray and she says yes and we're, we're going to make her the good grandpa sweater because that was the cardigan that she called for. I was going to make her the champagne cardigan only because I had the yarn um, in that quantity. But she didn't like the merino um, held together with the alpaca, nor did she like the merino alone. And I just cannot find a sweater quantity enough to make the champagne cardigan um, in the size that she needs. Plus, uh, the yarn I would be getting is in DK, so it wouldn't be... The right um, yarn so I'm gonna contact pick up every stitch and see if I can cancel that order and if I can if I can't I'll I'll look into something else all right I will use I definitely will have other use for it all right so I I'm glad that I got a chance to think through my projects with all of you today and rediscover yarn that I have in my quantity and hope that you are all enjoying your beautiful day today and that you're feeling restful and getting some oh god you know it's important not to look at what yarn you have because when you do you find things that you thought you got rid of because I just found this yarn and I completely forgot about this yarn this is a good yarn too this is sport weight um paint box really this is a uh, wakes good acrylic yarn and so does bravo i've i've made several items with their yarn and i kind of say i have zero complaint i have a had a very positive experience with that maybe i make that baby's blanket for my son's um teacher for that she's having her first baby so i want to do baby's blanket love making baby's blanket okay that's enough rambling for me thank you so much for being a thought partner, listening to my rambles, and happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy living.